First of all, thank you all for helping this channel grow. We truly appreciate the support. Making these documentaries isn't easy. We do weeks, sometimes months of research. None of the narrator lines is copied from any website. All the lines were written by us. Thank you. Hope you enjoy. You're watching the Flyboy Gang story. Sit back and relax. King Lil J began staying with Duck and his family. He was already Duck and Brick's cousin by marriage. Him and Brick became close. According to FBG Brick, Lil J was his right-hand man. They all shared underwear, shoes, clothes, and even slept in the same bed. After took his death, King Lil J became insane gangster disciple. He no longer wanted to be a BD. Lil J became a member of FBG. He was number double O. Around this time, STL members were making a name for themselves. People such as Dutchie earned a lot of street credit by putting in work. He was a frontline soldier for STL. Him and Bostrell would often go out and do hits together. In May of 2011, STL co-founder Seaball was arrested for shooting a man and was sentenced to 11 years in prison. Seaball was one of STL top hitters. He led the gang for only two years before getting arrested. Seaball is KI's uncle as well. He taught her a lot about the streets. In 2012, KI name began ringing bells in the Woodland neighborhood. Her and FBG buddy allegedly began sliding together. Although many people say she wasn't a killer, KI was definitely a shooter. Around this time, Jio, also known as Els, Lil P, and Can't Get Right were becoming more active in the streets as well. Can't Get Right was the nickname friends gave Man Man when he was younger. The name come from the 1999 movie Life starring Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence. In the movie, Can't Get Right is a character portrayed by actor Bookie Woodbine. The character Can't Get Right was a mute. Man Man wasn't too fond of the name, but it stuck for years. People even began calling him Get Right. At the time, Man Man was hanging out with mostly of the younger STL members such as Lil P, Dell, Lucky, KI's twin brother G.I. Joe, Modell, Wooski, and G. Daisky. They all hung out at G. Daisky's house at 62, 15 South Rhodes Avenue. A lot of things took place at this house. Shootings, robberies, fights, and drug deals. The teens would use drugs all day at G. Daisky's. Even the good kids in the neighborhood hung out there. They felt like they were a part of something. 16-year-old Del Fisher was one of the kids who hung out at G. Daisky's. Dell began claiming STL but wasn't an active member. Dell never got a chance to make a name for himself. On December 5, 2011, he was shot and killed walking to the store. 600 took credit for the hit. Cash was released from prison in 2011 after serving 31 months. He didn't want any visits from family or friends when he was inside. Cash was placed on house arrest for several months. While being on house arrest, K 
Cash caught up on everything in the drill world by talking to family members and friends and watching YouTube videos. Cash instantly became a STL member. He was ready to join the FBG group as well, but Duck and the others didn't believe he was talented enough at the time. Cash began releasing music in 2012. He was already known in the drill world for allegedly dating Chief Keef mother back when he was 16 years old. Cash was still on house arrest when he started recording music. The first song he released was Go Up in November of that year. Not only was Cash a real shooter, he was a hustler as well. Him and a young Bostrel sold crack cocaine together. Cash loved gambling as well. FBG Cash wasn't like most drill rappers. He didn't pop pills or drink clean. The only thing Cash did was drink alcohol. Some say that he was an alcoholic. He would get drunk and joke around. He was a good spades player as well. Everyone would meet up at Lashina's and play spades all night. Lashina's place was another safe hangout spot for Duck and his friends. She would often throw house parties. SDL members such as Billionaire Black, Dutchie, Young, Butto, Wooski, and Kai all spent a lot of time at Lashina's. Meanwhile, Chief Keef was becoming a star in Chicago. Most of his videos on YouTube had reached over a million views at this point. In January of 2012, Chief Keef released another underground hit title, 300. In the song, Chief Keef dis took again. This only caused more confusion in Chicago. SDL members began sliding on O Block even more after the song was released. The song was huge in Chicago. It was even played on the radio. The music video instantly reached millions of views on YouTube. FBG was no competition at the time. Lil Durk, Lil Reese, and Chief Keef would all eventually sign a record deal. Dirk and Reese both signed to Diff Jam and Sosa signed a huge deal with Interscope. Around this time, Manny had became the manager of FBG. His plan was to make Young the star of the group. Young had the potential to be a huge star. He had the look, the charm, and he was a decent trapper. Manny invested money in FBG. He paid for studio time and even purchased studio equipment. Manny didn't know much about the music business at the time. He would eventually bring in a guy by the name of Swiper from Newtown to help out with the management. Swiper was a well-known stick-up kid from the low end. He had a lot of knowledge about the business and had a few connections as well. He began living with Manny and his family. More people joined FBG at this time. Brick became number 30, Butter became number 26, Cash became number 63, FYG J Main from Jaro City was number 001, Kells was number 22, Creed the Don was number 35, Bigger would later become number 17, Wooski number 11 and Scrap from Mob was number 15. King Lil J became good friends with his pill supplier. White Sean, also known as White Boy, was a drug dealer from the gangster disciple set PBG. PBG meaning Puff Bear Gang was one of the deadliest sets in Chicago. White Boy was good friends with the infamous Young Pappy. He was a shooter and a hustler. White Boy allegedly sold everything such as ecstasy, pharmaceutical pills, cocaine, and even marijuana. Him and Lil J began hanging out, and he would eventually become an unofficial member of FBG. He was number six. Around this time, King Lil J became good friends with a guy by the name of Lil Jeff as well. Jeffrey Morgan, also known as Lil Jeff, was an up-and-coming rapper in Chicago. He was from the gangster disciple said IMM. 
meaning insane money mob. He was allegedly a hitter as well. Him and Lil J became close friends and even called each other brothers. Lil Jeff would eventually become a member of FBG and chose 99 as his number. Billionaire Black brought famous Dex around. At first Dex wasn't rapping. Billy had to basically force him to make music. Famous Dex was a GD from No Love MOE. He started off as a background dancer for Billionaire and Lil J. He later began rapping and became a member of FBG. His number was 007. FBG Duck became close friends with a guy by the name of One Trey. One Trey knew a lot about recording music and shooting videos. Duck wanted him to join the FBG team. One Trey became FBG number 13. One Trey began directing Duck and Lil J videos. In April of 2012, they released Chief Keef this song titled Critical. The video did more views than any other FBG video at this point. Some of Chief Keef fans instantly became interested in King Lil J. He was about to become the face of FBG, but unfortunately Manny had other plans for the group. Manny allegedly didn't want Lil J to rap. He allegedly told Lil J to just be the goon in the back while Young, Duck, Dutchie, and Billionaire Black all rap. That allegedly made Lil J upset. He would eventually leave the group and start his own crew WTO meaning we the Ops. In June of that year, the Flyboy Gang released the movement video. It was the first and only time we've seen all of the FBG members together. The song was huge in the neighborhood, but it wasn't a hit. Chief Keef continued putting out bangers. In June of 2012, Dutchie along with Bostrell and a few others were all standing outside of the house at 6347 St. Lawrence. The police pull up to the house and Dutchie and Bostrell allegedly ran. Bostrell was struck by a police vehicle and Dutchie gets shot in the leg by an officer. The police officer claimed that Dutchie was holding a handgun. However, no handgun was found at the scene. Dutchie family filed a lawsuit and later settled out of court for an ice amount of money. Dutchie went to jail shortly after for a totally different situation. He didn't get any visits from any of his STL friends. Only King Lil J came to visit him once when he was bonding Duck out of jail. King Lil J name began ringing bells throughout Chicago. In August of that year, he released How You Ain't Know. The video got decent views. Lil J fan base was getting bigger and bigger. He was becoming the face and voice of Tukaville. Joseph Coleman, also known as Lil Joe Joe from the Gangster Disciples Set Brick Squad, was next to blow in Chicago. He was good friends with the FBG members. SDL and Brick Squad had temporarily became allies. In March of that year, Lil Dirk released Drill Classic L's anthem. In the song, he dis gangster disciple gang bricks quad. Lil Joe Joe was ready to fire back. He recorded a diss track by the name of BDK. Lil Joe Joe wanted FBG Young to be featured on the song. He sends Cash the track to give to Young. Cash listens to the song while chilling at home on house arrest. In the song Lil Joe Joe not only diss Chief Keef and other 300 members, he dissed the whole Black Disciple Nation. Cash advised Jung not to get on the song. He knew that his little brother would become a huge target doing the song. FBG Young took Cash advice and stayed off the diss track. In April of that year, Lil Joe Joe released Drill Classic BDK. The song quickly reached over a million views on YouTube. 
Back in 2012, getting 1 million views on YouTube was really huge. The internet had way less traffic back then. Jojo became a star overnight. In June before been taken down, the video reached over a million views in only two months. The song caused more tension in the Woodland neighborhood. Every Friday night, the young GDs in the neighborhood threw huge BDK parties. They called it BDK Friday. The gangs would all get together, party, and even slide on ops together. The GDs in the neighborhood were very strong at this time. Although OTF 300 were famous and making a lot of money, the GDs were winning the war. Some say that jealousy played a part in the war. The young GDs in the neighborhood wasn't making money like OTF 300. Like I said earlier, Sosa, Lil Reese, and Lil Dirk were all signed to major record labels. This was around the time people such as Famous Dex and King Yella came around the Flyboy Gang. They were all a part of the BDK movement. King Lil J began sliding with Brick Squad. He really took the BDK movement serious. Weeks before Lil Jojo was murdered, Lil J was shot. Him and Lil Jojo were hanging out and some BDs told Jojo that he couldn't be on their block because of the BDK song. A young wild Lil J refused to leave the block and was shot nine times. Other people were shot as well. King Lil J was so high on drugs that he didn't feel anything. The very next day he was released from the hospital. Lil Jojo continued disrespecting OTF 300. One night him along with FBG Duck and Billion Air Black went over to O Block starting trouble. Fortunately the police was there at the time and no one was hurt. On September 4, 2012, Lil Jojo was shot and killed in his neighborhood. He was 18 years old. Some say that Lil Jojo funeral was one of the biggest in Chicago history. Hundreds of GDs came to pay their respect. In Be A Star Derrick Rose allegedly paid for the funeral. After the death of Lil Jojo, the gangster disciples in the neighborhood were all ready to go to war. The BDK movement was now in full effect. More bodies began dropping. The world was now interested in the drill culture. They realized that a war was really going on in Chicago. Thirteen-year-old Taekwong Tyler was K.I. Lil P and other STL members' younger friend. He was a good kid who only wanted to have fun. On June 24, 2012, Taekwon was shot and killed outside a house party in the 6200 block of South Roads. STL members were allegedly starting trouble with Jaro City members at the party that night. After the party, Jaro City member Nate decided to shoot at a crowd of SDL members. One bullet struck Taekwong in the chest. Brick and other SDL members wanted revenge that same night. Brick and a few others grab a few guns and go out to look for Jaro City Nate at around 3.30 in the morning. As soon as they leave the house at 6215 Roads, police officers hops out and search them. They found the guns and took Brick and his friends to jail. 
Swiper and Wooski both lose their guns in the incident. Brick would spend the next four years in the county jail. While serving time, Brick gets in several fights. He even allegedly beat up Courtney from TYMB. Brick had a bond at the time, but was forced to sit in jail because his family and friends couldn't come up with the bail money. Brick was the oldest member of SDL he had allegedly put in a lot of work for the set when he was free. Younger members felt safer with Brick around. They also had a little guidance as well. The young wild gang members in the neighborhood started a set by the name of Taekwon World. TW quickly became a known and feared gang in the Woodland neighborhood. Marvel Williams, also known as Wooski, became one of STL top hitters. Before claiming STL, Wooski claimed Hadaway Block. Wooski has a lot of brothers. Him and some of his brothers lived in Parkway Gardens with their mother. They moved there around 2005 when Wooski was 8 years old. Before moving to Parkway Gardens, Wooski lived on 69th of Eberhardt. He began claiming a GD set by the name of E-Block along with a few of his brothers. Wooski's father was a feared BD. He was allegedly a hit man back in the 90s. Although Wooski lived in Parkway Gardens, he continued to claim E-Block with his brothers. In 2007, Wooski's older brother fella from E-Block was shot and killed. Big Mike allegedly began putting in work at an early age. He was loved and respected in Parkway Gardens. Not only was he a shooter, Big Mike knew how to box. Big Mike was a BD. He was good friends with people such as O.D. Perry, Boss Stop, B.J. and C. Murder who all were GDs at first. When Wick City was first created, Big Mike was right there. He stayed getting in trouble and going to jail. Around 2010, Wooski began hanging with Jaro City members. The older members really took liking to Wooski. They took him under their wing. Jaro City became home to Wooski. Jaro City and 600 were at war. 600 was one of Wick City allies. It was only a matter of time before the two gangs bump heads. A 13-year-old Wooski began sliding with older Jaro City members. They didn't mind taking Wooski out on hits. They knew he would shoot with no hesitation. By 2012, Wooski's name was ringing bells in the neighborhood. He had already allegedly had a few bodies and was involved in a lot of shootings at the age 15. Wooski was no longer living in Parkway Gardens. He was now living with an older friend from Jaro City. This is how he became good friends with people such as K.I., G. Daisky, F.B.G. Butta, Can't Get Right, Dell, and Modell. 17-year-old Modell McCambry was one of the good kids in the neighborhood. He was a junior at T. Minglewood Community Academy. Modell was a good student and made good grades. Modell and his family lived on the 6500 block of Rhodes. His older cousin Marlon Monroe, also known as Doc, was affiliated with SDLEBT as well. He was trying to change his life. Doc was painting at his aunt's woodlawn building. He left the work site and walked down the block to a convenience store to get a drink. Doc never made it inside the store. O-Block members had allegedly pulled up in a vehicle and fired a lot of shots at Doc. Doc got hit and fell into a patch of tall weeds in an empty lot that adjoins the corner store. The police came to investigate the shooting and clean up the scene. They didn't see Doc's body in the empty lot. Modell discovered his cousin lifeless corpse in the lot hours later walking home. That made Modell want to gangbang even more. He knew who had killed his cousin Doc. 
Wooski and Modell were close. Some even say they were cousins. Modell also loved going to church. He played drums in a choir at Woodland Union Missionary Baptist Church. Some say that Modell was a ladies' man. He even allegedly dated K.I. back in 2010. According to Modell's mother, he hung out with the wrong crowd. Modell began claiming STL and hanging out with people such as Wooski, Man Man, Lil P, and other STL members. He changed his Facebook name to Tukaville Modell and began posting pictures with guns. Modell began getting into it with members from O Block, 600 and TYMB. He allegedly got into an altercation with King Vaughn. On October 13, 2012, Modell along with his cousin Miles went to meet a young female around 9.30 on the 6300 block of South Roads. Miles had a bright future. He was a high school football player at Leo High School and had never been in any trouble. Miles was looking forward to a scholarship. Modell and Miles were allegedly set up by the young female. While standing in front of a house stalking, a guy in a black hoodie approached on foot and shot Modell several times. As Miles quickly tends to his younger cousin, he gets shot five times. They were both rushed to the hospital. Modell was later pronounced dead and Miles had to fight for his life and ended up paralyzed. T. Roy and King Vaughn were allegedly the shooters. This made Wooski upset. He went out looking for O Block members immediately. Many don't know that SDL and Jaro City were at war with each other after the death of 13-year-old Taekwon Tyler. In the summer of 2012, shootouts took place between the two gangs. One day, while walking through the neighborhood, FBG Young and other SDL members were shot at by a Jaro City member. Young allegedly had a gun but didn't return fire. This made Bostrell very angry. He was still on crutches after being struck by the police vehicle earlier that summer. Jaro City member P5 Crack was loved in the neighborhood. He was a hustler and a ladies' man. P5 helped pin the war between Jaro City and SDL. In October of that year, P5 Crack was shot and killed. O Block and 600 took credit for the hit. This only made Jaro City and SDL come together. What the? About this action, man. We is out here, man. Standing on y'all. YMB. Why, man? GDN. TYMB. Oh, it's out here. College Scroll. Back towards the land. I'm back towards the Bostrell was SDL main hitter at the time. He allegedly had five bodies, including O.D. Perry, D. Thang, and She Roy. Bostrell was a huge target 600 and O. Block wanted him dead and shot at him on two different occasions. A 17-year-old Bostrell had enough. He wanted to change his life. Bostrell planned to move to Iowa and live with some friends. He go and buy a train ticket. Unfortunately, on November 7, 2012, Bostrell was shot and killed visited an ex-girlfriend. He was supposed to leave that day. Bostrell decided to stay for one more day. The train ticket was found in his pocket. SDL members were really hurt. FBG Duck, Cash, and other close friends came to the hospital to visit a brain-dead Bostrell hours before he died. 
While they were praying for a miracle, the ops joked on social media. Ross and Shaw also known as Lil B started off claiming TYMB. He was known to be a young wild shooter for the set. Lil B was always a black disciple. He didn't flip when he became a member of EBT. Older EBT members took a liking to Lil B. He was one of the wildest youngsters in the neighborhood. Lil B was good friends with FBG Duck, Brick, Young, Dutchie, KI, FBG Butter, Tutu and several other Jaro City members, Wooski and a lot of EBT members as well. Lil B was loved and respected in the neighborhood. He didn't play around with anyone. In 2012, he allegedly shot Cole from STL in the leg for talking bad about him behind his back. Lil B was a serious young man. December of 2012, King Lil J and Billion Air Black released Drill Classic Oh So Arrogant. Oh So Arrogant was both Lil J and Billy's biggest song at the time. The video quickly reached a million views. Billion Air Black was now back living in the neighborhood. Him and his family moved to 62nd of Vernon. This is how his younger brother Richie Jerk became a member of Taekwong World. Billy was loved by the older guys in the neighborhood. They respected his vision and talent. Like I said earlier, Billy was one of the first drill rappers. He was in a rap group by the name of Brick Boys and went by the name Buck 20. Brick Boys began recording music around 2008. Billy was already famous in the Woodland neighborhood. 